Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let's move on to the next system. Uh, this system is not as exciting or as dramatic as airships because it is just a balloon which is tethered to the ground. But even though it is tethered to the ground, it can be made use for very interesting and uh, far reaching applications. So this is a photograph of a small portable airship which is launched from the back of a pickup truck. Okay. So, what is it? Basically, an aerodynamically shaped tethered LTA platform. So, it is not a vehicle, it is not an aircraft, it is a platform because it is expected and desired to remain stationary. So, one huge degree of freedom we have removed. The payload that can be mounted on this is again limited by your imagination. Most people use it for either communication equipment or for surveillance equipment. Now, what are the desired feature of a good aerostat? For a given size, we should be able to carry the largest amount of payload. Look like just like any other aeronautical system, we should have high payload fraction. It should be able to maintain a specified altitude on its own without any great intervention. And once it maintains its position, it should remain stable. That means as the wind direction changes or disturbances occur, it should on its own align itself and not demonstrate a continuous motion which will basically distract it from its application. Now all of these are affected by the envelope shape and hence the sizing of the envelope, the shaping of the envelope and very accurate calculation of the size, location and type and shape of the fins that you see on the back is an important exercise and we have to learn all these things as part of this course. Okay. So, this particular aerostat as an example can carry around uh, 10 to 15 pounds of payload at a height of 700 to 2000 feet and uh, it is not very long, it will probably easily fit into this room, but it can remain up for around 48 hours. Now my question to you is, should it not remain endlessly, why should there be 48 hour limit or so for this particular system? So what do you think is the reason due to which 48, yes? Yeah, I, I would also encourage people to speak their names because they are still new to each other. Sonia, from which department are you? Nanotechnology. Okay. So, uh, might be because of the leakage of the gas contained inside over a period of time. That is precisely the reason. Uh, if we are able to make an envelope which has got little or no leakage, okay, then Actually, there is no limit to endurance, but typically fabrics have a particular leak rate and that introduces a limit to how many hours you can keep it without topping up. In this case, it is around 48 hours, which is good enough if you want to do, if you want to have um, a system for around two days to do surveillance, just one deployment and it is there. Interestingly, it can withstand winds of around 45 knots which becomes almost 90 meet kilometers per hour approximately and it just needs one crew member who is standing below you can see. So it is a single man operation or a single woman operation and uh, it can be easily deployed and the same person can even drive the vehicle and take it around. All right, let us look at what are the key parts of the aerostat. So the first and the most important part obviously is the envelope 
here we say the helium chamber because we are assuming that helium is being used but it could also contain hydrogen or any other lifting gas. So it is basically the one that contains the lifting gas so it is nothing but a container it is nothing but an envelope to carry a given volume of gas. To control the pressure inside the envelope and to ensure that the envelope does not reach breaking point due to stretching because of the change in temperature in or because of any other reason which causes stress in the envelope, we have a relieving system called as the air balloon ne. Please note the T in this word is silent. So, it is called as air balloon ne. Uh, it is actually a small air bag inside the gas bag and by controlling intentionally the volume of this air bag that means by taking out the air or taking in the air in this gas bag you can control the volume available for the helium or hydrogen or LTA gas inside to expand or contract. So we use it essentially for buoyancy control and stress relieving the envelope. Then we have a payload platform. Now in this sketch we have shown the payload directly attached to the envelope and we have shown it below the balloon but it could be actually anywhere on the body of the aerostat and in many cases such as the picture which I showed you ahead the payload is mounted not on the envelope but at a particular place called as a confluence point below the aerostat. Okay. So the payload or the equipment that you want to carry could be directly on the balloon if the local loads can be handled by the envelope material or else you can delink that by mounting it on a point called as a confluence point. And then the connection between the envelope and the ground is this tether. In this case we have shown some kind of a catenary profile because we are uh, expecting it to be under high wind conditions. But uh, there is one serious mistake in this figure. I do not know whether you can make out. What do you think is uh, not correct at least conceptually in this particular figure? At the ground, yes, the tether at the, the tether will be connected to something on the ground. In this case, they have shown a wind change. Yeah, so this is the wind change mooring system. I mean, at the booking end, you can Not necessary. I mean, you one can have various kinds of systems. The sketch shows a system which has a um, uh, small, you know, cup like thing to hold the nose, etc. Uh, but one can mount it anywhere. So it's a conceptual sketch. What is it? Yeah, just a minute. Amiya, you are saying something? Yes, sir, the tether does not seem to be passed. That can happen if the wind is very high. When you fly a kite, for example, in high wind conditions, this is the kind of profile you see for even the kite. So the tether can remain uh, in high winds in this particular uh, shape. Yes, you had you had a point? Yes. Your name, name? Ashish. Ashish, yes. It should face opposite. Why should it face opposite? Yeah, so it is actually facing opposite the wing, that is right. The wind, if the wind is from left to right, then that is the right direction in which it is facing. Why should it face opposite to the wind? It should not, it is remaining stationary. So the best way to do remain stationary is to face the wind and use the fins on the back because as the wind direction changes, the fin will bring you back. This is called as weather cocking. So the direction is right. Yes, Jagdish. That is just a conceptual sketch as I said. The tether is connected to the envelope. It may not be. There may be some I other. Hmm? I know. I'm, this is a conceptual sketch. I agree. There is something more fundamental which is wrong. Yes. Sunira. Yes. Can be. The payload can be on the balloon as I said. It can be on the balloon or it can be below. Anything else? Okay, 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 fine. So basically what we wanted to show was a three tail configuration with the third one hidden because it is behind and this one is actually the top fin. It may, it may seem to you as a something inclined towards you but actually it is meant to be vertical. Okay, I will tell you the problem is with the angle that the aerostat envelope is shown. Actually if there is wind 
it will trim to some angle of attack. It will not remain horizontal. The balloon will actually acquire some equilibrium angle. Okay, so I will correct this figure. I have the correct figure. I don't know how this wrong figure has come here. This was made by one of our M Tech students, and I had told him that this has to be corrected. But it's my mistake. I put the wrong figure in the presentation. Okay. Yes. So there could be a situation hmm. the wind is in such a wind is in such a direction hmm. that this is the transition. It could be, but in that case, the tether will not be so much catenary. When there is a catenary position, we normally expect it to trim at some angle. But you are right. I could alter the center of gravity and create a situation where the trimmed angle is kind of zero. But normally that's not the case. Okay. So let's go ahead. Uh, the tail fins that are mounted behind are essentially for static and dynamic stability. Okay, so now there are two words here: static stability and dynamic stability. So the aerospace engineers among you, I am sure you will appreciate the difference between the meaning of static and dynamic stability. But for the benefit of others who may not know, or for those who have forgotten, let us have a brief idea about what is meant by static stability. What is meant by dynamic stability, and what is the difference between them? So, any volunteers to explain the difference between these two terms? Don't worry about aerostats. Talk about aircraft in general, because the same things apply here. What is meant by static stability of uh, an aircraft or a system? So, Nira, you want to try? Yes. So what you said is, if a force is applied on the system, it returns back to the original position. No, this is not static stability. This is, of course, if this happens, if this happens, the system is statically stable. But something less also is acceptable. Okay. So this is not the requirement. This is more than the requirement. So what do you think is the minimum requirement for a system to be statically stable? Okay, so <coughs> we don't have to really use the many new terms to explain it. Basically, we should say if a system is in equilibrium and if some unbalanced force acts on it or an external force acts on it, what is the tendency of the system? Under the action of this external force, if the response of the system, natural response without any intervention, is to tend towards the original position rather than going away, then it is statically stable. Okay? It may not lead to stability. So what may happen is, if I disturb a system, if I take it, let's say, away, it should tend to come back. It may exceed and go on the other side. It is still statically stable. Okay? But then, as Pratik mentioned, over a period of time, normally we expect the oscillations to slowly reduce and it should actually come back to the position that is dynamic stability. So dynamic stability is what happens in the end. Does it actually come back? Static stability is does it tend to come back or not? So we should have both in aerostats. We should have static stability. That means we should have a tendency of it to automatically react in such a way that it tends to come back. And not only that, over a period of time or a reasonable period of time, we want it to actually also come back, not keep on oscillating for whole life. So the tail fins help in both and they are sized from both the considerations. The tether is basically uh, a cable which attaches the envelope to the ground and the payload is what you as a user mount onto the system either on the envelope or at a point below it and the ground station is something that helps in two things in winching and in mooring so what is the meaning of winching what is the meaning of mooring and how are they different can someone try to explain what comes to your mind winching and mooring yes your name kiran, kiran. The winching is the process of holding in the place. And what is mooring? Mooring is maybe changing position while still holding. 
Okay, so it's not correct. Actually, mooring is the holding in a particular place, and winching is basically in raising or lowering it to the desired location. So, a winch is a system which pulls or pushes to intentionally change the location, and a mooring system is the one where you attach it when you don't want it to move. So, you have to have a winching system for up lowering and raising and lowering and a mooring system to hold it when you don't want. For example, if you want to leave the aerostat on the ground for some reason for a couple of hours, you don't want it to keep moving around, you want it to be moored on the ground. Okay, this is a moored aerostat developed in India by a DRDO laboratory called as Aerial Delivery R&D Establishment in Agra. It's a pioneering institute or lab in the country which has done work in the area of LTA systems. Mostly they have worked in aerostats, but now I believe they are also starting to work on airships. So this is one of their first aerostats. Uh, so you can see that uh, there is this hull or envelope. Now hull and envelope are interchangeable words. They, they, they come from the aerospace lineage and which comes from the ship lineage or naval lineage. Hull is basically the body. So hull is as same as synonymous with the envelope. You have fins on the back and notice the fins are quite large in size in aerostat. And then you have this mooring mast and here you have a system for winching it up and down. And then we also see something called as confluence line which are basically lines which are then attached together. I am sure when you fly kites, you will remember when you, when you flew kites that uh, we attach a single tether to the kite with two ropes towards the end which are properly sized. Okay? The angle between the two ropes is actually done. How much is the angle between the two ropes? As children when you flew kites, did, was, did someone teach you how to do kanni? So we, we hold the knot, it should be it should hit the top portion, uh, the top attachment point and bottom attachment point. So the two of them should be the same length, which means 45 degree angle. That gives the best characteristics. But those of you who are kite enthusiasts, if I want to have a highly maneuverable kite, what should I do? I was taught by my seniors that there should be one inch or one finger width more on the top. That gives you a more maneuverable kite. If the wind conditions are very poor and you are going to basically fly by giving it a constant jerk, then the bottom should be longer than the top. So these are the things you learn. Similarly, there are confluence lines which are used to attach the envelope to the tether, which and the length of these lines and their orientation helps in deciding the stability characteristics. We will study this when we come to the stability of aerostats. This is one of the uh, recent aerostats developed by the same laboratory and uh, this photograph was taken at uh, the Aero India show. So you can see that there is a very neat winching and mooring system uh, developed incidentally by LNT in Pawai. And then you have this envelope and here you can see the payload is mounted in this case directly onto the envelope. Okay. Okay, so let's see. Uh, there is a very interesting new DRDO ने तैयार किया है उसे जिसमें लगे हैं जासूसी आंख और कान। Commonwealth खेलों की शुरुआत और समापन के दौरान सबकी नजर इस शानदार एरोस्टेट पर टिकी रही। लेकिन ऐसे एरोस्टेट सिर्फ मनोरंजन के लिए ही नहीं होते। DRDO ने ऐसा ही एक एरोस्टेट रडार बनाया है। किसी बड़े बैलून की तरह दिखने वाला ये रडार आसमान में स्थिर रहता है और जमीन से जुड़े केबलों पर टिका होता है इसमें लगे कैमरे और सेंसर जादुई आंख और कान का काम करेंगे इतना ही नहीं आगरा में बकायदा इस रडार का सफल परीक्षण हो चुका है फिलहाल इसकी रेंज 25 किलोमीटर तक है जिसे आगे 100 किलोमीटर तक बढ़ाया जा सकेगा लगातार एक महीने तक हवा में टंगे रहने की क्षमता वाले इस एरोस्टेट का इस्तेमाल नेवी, आर्मी और एयरफोर्स के अलावा निगरानी और इमरजेंसी सेवाओं में भी किया जाएगा। अभी तक इन्हें विदेशों से मंगाया जाता था, जिसके मुकाबले अपने देश में बने एरोस्टेट की कीमत सिर्फ एक चौथाई होगी। इसे विकसित करने में 
आगरा से नसीम अहमद के साथ नई दिल्ली से राजीव रंजन की रिपोर्ट एनडीटीवी इंडिया ओके नाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर एरोस्टैट 17 करोड़ रुपीस दैट दे मेंशन प्लीज नोट द बल्क ऑफ द मनी हैज गॉन इन द रडार डेवलपमेंट और द कॉस्ट ऑफ द रडार इज मच मोर देन द एरोस्टैट Okay, my guess would be that the aerostat system, everything together, will be not more than four to five crores, and the remaining money will be for the radar. Okay, but the whole system is what is important, not just the balloon. Okay, so now we have uh, NDTV's confirmation that aerostats are available and made in India.